Hi, everyone, and welcome to this next part on optimization for machine learning, where I would like to discuss in a little bit more detail uh, how to select the descent direction or the, the step length for a given descent direction with a bit more structure and in a better way so that we can really actually guarantee descent. Right, and before we do so, let's consider one thing. Um, first of all, this is the, the equation that we have. Right? We, so we have our current weight parameter, and then we update this with a descent direction, which we usually choose to be the steepest descent direction, so the negative gradient. But then we have this additional step length parameter. And we learned in the last videos that this is of vital importance. So if you look at this example once more, this was the, the example we, we considered through all these videos, where we have the sine function and we have these 10 measurements which are corrupted by noise. And the plan is now to fit a polynomial of order three to the data. And what you see, because we use a linear model, so coefficients times the, the polynomial degrees, we can find this using a least squares um, ansatz. And we use the pseudo inverse in this case to simply solve this as a closed form solution. And what we got was this red curve. And then we studied, OK, it's, as we know, it's a convex problem. There is a unique minimizer. So gradient descent should, in principle, give us the exact same solution. And what we then tried was to use gradient descent with different step length. So you see here, this has been discussed in the last video. For different step sizes, you see different convergence behavior, let's say. Okay, so you see for a very small step size of 10 to the minus 6 here, we do have an actual problem. It does decrease, but it's barely visible to the eye because it's so slow. And then for increasing step sizes, we have a better behavior. However, still, um, what is not so well visible here at the right position, there is the step size of 10 to the minus 2, which does not ever converge. Right? We have chosen a too large step size, and this diverges. And then we discussed as a final step, OK, let's do this in an adaptive measure. We have some step length that starts at a certain threshold and then decreases iteration by iteration. And we see that this has, in the beginning, right, it, it, there's some sort of overshoot, but then it has a, a, a quite a, an acceptable behavior. But then it starts to, to slow down because the descent direction gets too small. And so we have an actual problem because tuning the step size is, is very hard. It's very problem specific. And it's clearly not satisfactory to have to do this every time, 10 times or so. So this means we basically uh, pay a lot for, for finding the minimum. So in order to be, get this in a better way, let's consider this in a bit more uh, structure here and ask ourselves, what are the conditions for guaranteed descent? For guaranteed descent. And not just guaranteed, but a sufficient decrease. And before we do this, let's consider um, this problem separately. So picking the direction first. Let's say we have decided on the steepest descent direction and then picking the step length in a second step. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to define a loss function or the head version because it now does not depend on the weights anymore, but it depends now on the step length. We have decided on a fixed parameter v. And what we need to do is to decide in which way to choose this w. So it's the loss at wi plus eta times v. Okay. So you see here, clearly, this is the important parameter here. So given a fixed direction, we want to pick uh, the step size, how far to go into this direction. And so what we see is that the problem actually becomes, now let's try to draw this plot here. This is now the L hat function over eta. So the scalar optimization problem given a fixed direction, just tell me how far to go. And so if we pick the step size z zero, then this is the loss at wi. And now let's just assume you know, we go in this direction and we have a, a function that may look like this. And the question is now, what is a criterion to have sufficient decrease? Okay, so what we started with was the statement that L hat 
of eta should be smaller than L hat of zero, right? Remember, setting L, uh, eta to zero gives us L of wi, so the current loss function, which means for a positive eta, I have decrease if I enforce this guarantee, but this is not sufficient as we have seen earlier, right? So what we can have is, this means basically everything from here on is excluded. However, you see that this condition is not sufficient because it can be arbitrarily small in increase. So we have to wait infinitely long. Um, and it's even the possibility that we actually might get stuck in the end. So what we do need is we do need some sort of criterion to have a guaranteed amount of decrease. So what I ask you, the condition for guaranteed descent, the addition should be for guaranteed descent to a sufficient degree. So what I can do now is I can try to get some sort of slope here and say, okay, everything that is be above this threshold should be excluded. This might, means that this part would be out of the picture as well. And how do we do this? Um, this is what is called the Amir rule, and I briefly commented on the Amir rule in the, at the end of the last video where I said we have this Amir backtracking type algorithm. And I will show you in code how this works in a second. So what this means is, or what you consider is, the gradient at our current iterate. This is really what gives us the V, if you recall. If you use gradient descent, steepest descent, this is the direction that we have. And so what you can do is you can decide to say, okay, this direction should, well, we, we don't, cannot guarantee to follow it precisely, but we can say we should follow this descent or decrease to a certain degree. So what we are doing is we introduce a, an additional hyperparameter and we can say that L hat of eta should be smaller than or equal to L hat of zero and now plus, and well, I'm going to fill this out in a second, eta times the gradient with respect to w now of the loss function at the ith iterate. And then the inner product with the descent direction. So what you see here is I have the descent of the function and um, I have the, the v direction which is the direction I'm really actually going into. And so I do have this gradient and I'm saying okay just give me a fraction of this gradient to give me the, the actual decrease. So what I'm introducing here is an epsilon parameter Let's call it epsilon one because I'm going to need a second one for, for the next condition. And this now tells me, okay, if I, let's just say randomly this were epsilon one equal to 0 0.2 or so, give me 20% of the decrease. And so this one excludes now a part of the equation given on the criterion how quickly the descent is in my current position. And so this is a very known, well-known condition and it's called the Armio condition. So this is what I commented on, on Amio backtracking, but it may still not be sufficient, right? You see now what I can do is if I make this threshold larger, let's say I pick epsilon to be, I don't know, 0.5 or so, I get something like this, and this would exclude all of these parts here, if I uh, pick a value in the middle, let's say 0.3, then this would exclude different parts. So really depending on what I choose for epsilon, I exclude more or less of my, my, my let's say, my, my variation in, in the parameter that I can choose. And you see that for certain parameters we do not even have to have the situation that we have a, a connected interval, but we can have two disconnected components here. And so what you see is, well, it's a matter of taste a little bit. This is what we call a, a hyperparameter in the setting, how to pick it. But what it does not guarantee is that we get arbitrarily small step sizes. And if you think about this, what we had earlier was the criterion or the, the problem that if I pick the step size to be 10 to the minus six, for example, that we do have descent, but it can become very, very slow. And so this is why there was a third condition introduced 
that we say, okay, let's look at the curvature. And an observation that often holds is that the curvature will become higher the more you approach the minimum. Right? So we have a, a slope that becomes flatter and flatter in the end as we approach a minimum. Right? So if for continuous curves, this is what we observe here the same, right? We have somewhat steep and then it, it gets flatter. So what we can demand is that the slope at our next iterate is smaller than the current slope. So what I can say is that, for instance, the gradient of the loss function at our next, oh, excuse me, at our next iterate wi plus eta times v, And then again, the inner product with V, that's mean the directional derivative that we are plotting here, this should be larger than epsilon two, here's the second parameter now, of the same expression at my current iterate. L of Wi transpose V. And now you think, okay, I said the slope should become smaller, and this looks like the slope becomes larger, but we take into account, please, that we have a descent. So this is a negative number, this is a negative number, meaning that this is larger, means in absolute value we have a slower or a smaller slope. And now what we can say is, okay, let's look at this slope, and we say everything that is bigger than, uh, smaller than this in, in, in absolute value is allowed uh, times this epsilon constant. So what we might do is we say, okay, let's consider this one and we take this times a fraction, which means we are only allowing parts maybe where the slope is less than, than let's say 0.5 times, times the original one. And so you see again, if we try to do this, this would then exclude everything here and also everything in this region and so on. So you will get, obviously, the decrease. Uh, the descent is also sufficient here. Um, this will kill some of the parts that are allowed. Here you will also have fractions which will be forbidden. And so now you see this one is really, really helpful because we have excluded small step sizes. And due to this, so not to confuse, this first one is known as the Amir rule, and these two together, are known as the Wolf conditions. And for those who are interested in the theory behind optimization, um, the Wolf conditions are actually uh, sufficient in many, many algorithms to prove that this direction will give you an optimum after a finite number of iterations to a given precision. So this is really powerful. And now what I introduced in the video before, this is how we're going to close here, was this idea of backtracking where I did not talk about the Wolf's conditions at all. And the reason is that what we used was what I call the backtracking. And the secret behind backtracking is that we started with a large value. Right? So this means I do not near really need this condition that we have a arbitrarily small step size and we need to exclude it in a sense because I can say, okay, the backtracking algorithm starts large and then gets smaller, smaller, smaller until I reach this feasible region. So by construction, I should approach this, this region that is allowed for me from, from the right, which then well, will avoid these arbitrarily small step sizes. And now let's have a look at the code once more. This is the examples that I had before. <clears throat> and we're going to compare this now with the Amio backtracking. So what you can see here, this is the code for this. And I'm not going over all the details. What really matters is um, here's a stopping con condition if the gradient is smaller than some threshold in norm. So the classical optimality condition, if you wish. And this is now the backtracking loop. So you see why, and this is exactly the thing I've written here as the Amio condition, right? So while W minus eta times um, 
pi is greater. So this one is, oh, there's a v missing here, um, greater than this one, what you will see is that you get this sufficient decrease. Okay? And now let's look at the code or the, the solution of the code. Um, what you see is these are the ones that we had before. And this is now the dashed line is now the backtracking algorithm. So you see that actually we have guaranteed descent and that we have guaranteed sufficient descent. So you can really see that um, well, it is important to consider step sizes. It's also somewhat expensive, right? Because this while loop that I had, okay, so as long as the de decrease is um, not large enough, reduce the eta. It can be the case that we have to evaluate this 10 times, 50 times, so really depending on how you pick the constants. So you have to pay a price to get this backtracking descent direction, but if you do so, you really have convergence in, in much fewer iterations and in the end this will help you out. So uh, we might, might have to discuss other aspects as well when we consider deep learning where the loss function is expensive to evaluate, but nevertheless, this is a condition that is really, really helpful for, for many optimization problems. And so we're going to close here. Thank you for watching. And the next video will cover the stochastic gradient descent setting. Thank you.